Jacqueline Gold, CBE, a truly wonderful and inspirational woman, it says on the giant scoreboards here, and a special member of the West Ham family. And Karen Brady stood and applauded in her memory, and so too did David Sullivan. And there was uh, an empty seat down in the director's box with a floral tribute lying on the claret and blue seat. Oh, we're nearly ready for the off here then. It looks as if Southampton will be kicking from right to left in this first half, away from their travelling supporters who are up to our right-hand side. If you look at this mighty Olympic Stadium as a clock face there, we're around about uh, half past five, if you like, and they're up around about the four o'clock mark, away to our right-hand side. The Saints in white with a broad red band down the front, the stripe with the black shorts, get us off and underway then, kicking from right to left against West Ham United in their famous claret and blue and both sides embroiled in this remarkable and so very concertina relegation race which way is it going to go Glenn? <laughs> that is the biggest question here on the afternoon whoever can settle the nerves whoever can make the least mistakes let's say they will be the ones that walk out victorious I don't think either side really want to draw I know all around them above them currently sitting in the Premier League table will be desperate for this to end in a stalemate but both managers down there when I look at them Ruben Sellers and David Moyes are absolutely desperate for three points here this afternoon should be cleared away the bat by Chaletta Tsar free kick is given by today's referee to Southampton inside their own half and around about five yards outside their own penalty area for a little bit of a, a late barge and it'll be played back to Bazuno. No, it won't. Uh, Duce Chaletta Tsar playing on the left hand side of the centre back, pairing with Bednarak to his right hand side, plays it forward, and it's intercepted at the back for West Ham United in the right back position by Tilo Kerr. He's played a lot of football out there uh, in his German career with PSG as well. And now Ben Rama for West Ham United on that far side from us, then the left hand side. Emerson is out there as well, coming into support. In the centre of midfield was Paqueta. West Ham have yet to see the best out of him. And I've seen a lot of him playing abroad and indeed for his country. And he's a player of great technique, is Lucas Paqueta. Yes, he is. And the West Ham fans want to see more of him. They want to see him influencing games. And they want to see him on the ball more this afternoon. But it was a sloppy start by him. Gave the ball away and Southampton nearly broke. Albeit for a strong Declan Rice challenge on Jim Lord Prowse. Finished in Scotland, Ross County nil, Celtic two, so they're nine points clear again. Uh, County say two points above Dundee United at the bottom. That's 15 wins on the spin, I think, now for Celtic in all. Here's Perro for Southampton, the left back, and into the West Ham half it goes. Saints bottom with 23 points, West Ham a point above them, both have played 26. Leicester have 25, they played two games more, Everton have 26. Uh, points uh, again they played a couple more Leeds have 26 Bournemouth and Forest 27 and then you're up to Wolverhampton Wanderers on 28 and Palace on 30 very very tight good challenge by Lavia wins it back for Southampton and they can counter on that far side with Stuart Armstrong it's on their right playing it forward to Theo Walcott needs games under his belt needs good performances Theo Walcott I think his contract is up in the summer the roar tells you that West Ham United are countering with Ben Rama and here is one of the world's best central midfield players in Declan Rice to the left hand side Ben Rama to take on his man Lavia pushes it square looking for Paqueta Walker Peters can't get it away ricochets to Paqueta on that left hand side with his white boots it's curled in by Ben Rama bending 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 and all the way out of play for a goal kick yeah it's too big from Ben Rama he's looking for a run of care at the back stick just gets too much out on it just hangs in the wind slightly and drifts out of play and a little sigh of relief from the Southampton players but so far I'm quite impressed with how Southampton have settled in they look comfortable on the ball and they seem to be the team trying to dictate play a little bit more first of our two commentaries on five live today we're at St James's Park for the 4.30 kickoff Newcastle United against Manchester United a Newcastle win I believe will take them out, uh, beyond Manchester United in the table on goal difference as Southampton try and bring it away here with Elian Nusi striding over the halfway line pushes to the right hand side Walker Peters is in support this is around about five yards outside the box sees the run of uh, 
Elianusi couldn't play it back to him and West Ham United clear to the halfway line right hand side where Ings works it round the corner doesn't find his man he closes down closes in on the attempted clearance may well have blocked Perro's clearance with his hand but it's out of play anyway for a throw it is and I can't help but feel that Danny Ings this afternoon the former Southampton player the Southampton fan may have a big say on today's game he's not started too well but he's an out and out goal scorer known for scoring plenty at this level and West Ham will be looking for him to open the scoring here this afternoon very important goal coming up in the WSL Arsenal against Manchester City here's Flo Pollock Arsenal take the lead Arsenal 2 Manchester City 1 Katie McKay picked it up from a short corner drove into the box and fired it into the top corner big big goal Arsenal 2 Man City 1 they'd level Bunny Shaw's first half goal through Frida Marnham in the moment Manchester United top of the table with 41 points Man City have 38 Chelsea 37 and Arsenal 35 it is one that Arsenal needed to win a little bit later on Chelsea go to Villa at uh, 6.45 in the evening now Southampton have it with Elianusi pushes to the edge of the penalty area looking there for Mat uh, Mara and it's cleared away by West Ham United there's a steady not frenetic pace to the opening exchanges as Bowen goes in with a challenge on Perros had a decent season with Southampton down the left hand side in comes Kira with a block challenge and it fizzes through it's a little bit little bit higgledy piggledy at the moment Glenn yeah it is like I said I think Southampton are the ones that are trying to get their foot on the on the ball and dictate play and West Ham have a burst out onto the field like I thought they would they, they sat back they're waiting to get the ball back off Southampton and there was just a little air of uncertainty from the crowd there a little a, a, a rising noise of maybe a little bit of unhappiness with how they've started the game so far yeah there's a ball down the far side from us that's the left by Socek it went out of play it was tight to the line Ben Rama was over there went out of play for a, 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 a throw in and the West Ham United fans in the sunshine on the far side from us groaned around about 15,000 of them with that tensions are running high here there's all sorts of speculation about David Moyes job does he have to win this to stay in a job very difficult for a manager to and his players to deal with that sort of speculation and Glenn although they'll say it doesn't get through to the dressing room and the players you'll know very well it does yes it does get through uh, regardless of, of the manager situation the, the players will, they'll be hurt and they won't want to be in the situation they're in like we, we questioned one of the other teams a, a, around the relegation zone and he's embarrassing especially for a group like West Ham everyone says it they're too good to be in this situation but at the end of the day the league doesn't lie I must admit in that last in the, in the last hour of the program we were talking to Rob Lee did not make me feel old I remember commentating on Rob when he was starting his career at Charlton and I've commentated on both of his boys playing as well so <laughs> <laughs> here is uh, his Ward Prowse now for Southampton away towards that far side that and they uh, it was Armstrong rather away towards the far side and there's a run up from the back by Walcott right hand side of the penalty tried to tuck it in and it's picked up by Lucas Fabianski back in the West Ham United goal for Areola. Will that make much of a difference for them? Uh, probably familiarity, definitely experience. He's been in this position before. I think probably Zuma will be comfortable with him behind him. And I'm sure he'll be shouting a lot and organising his defence, maybe more so than Areola, but rightfully got his, his place back after injury. Lovely ball by Rice out to the right hand touchline for Kira for West Ham United and Ben Johnson has been playing on the right but has lost confidence of late who played for the under 21s recently and that'll do him well and uh, his relative Paul Parker actually is sitting around about 10 feet to our left hand side he was working for BBC Radio London it's cleared away by the West Ham United goalkeeper Fabianzi's son comes out again 0-0 on 5 live from the BBC with 7 minutes played and that's a free kick here as Socek goes down now he's a player that hasn't hit the heights of last season really yes that is true um, obviously a, a goal scoring midfielder we've got used to in the Premier League but can't help but feel as though he was almost overachieving with the amount of goals he was scoring with his late runs into the box and this season it's just plateaued a little bit and unfortunately for West Ham they haven't been able to fill that void of the goals that he did score 
David Moyes could do with Moyes. Only got a couple. Declan Rice has got a couple. Paquetao's only got a couple. Ben Rama three. But here come West Ham down that left hand side. Pulled into the middle, looking for the run of Socek. Cleared away. Emerson back into the box. It's not yet away. But it'll be a goal kick. None of the West Ham United attacking players could attack that ball because they would have been offside. Emerson being one. And uh, through the middle for them, Danny Ings being the second. David Moyes looking on, it's a massive month for them, Glenn, nine games in April, they've got the two Europa League games against, uh, uh, the uh, conference games against Ghent in there, uh, they've got Arsenal at home, they've got, you know, massive games up and coming. Yeah, there's one that I look at in that group of fixtures there, and it's Bournemouth away, it's another one of this afternoon's fixtures, a huge game against the relegation candidate, and one that, if you don't win it, you can't afford to lose it. A little bit of momentum for Gary O'Neill's side. A little bit of momentum down there as well for Southampton of late. Leicester City look flat at the moment, but at this stage of the season, one win could change it all. And I think that shows if West Ham win today, they can jump five places. It's a fragile five places, but it looks much better than the current predicament they're in. And so uh, made me smile when Rob Lee was talking about leaders for a relegation battle. I'll tell you that in a moment. Here's Walker Peters for Southampton far side then four yards in from that right hand touch and long 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 way away from us on that far side of the pitch Labia into Elianus is coming in off the left hand side for Southampton quite often now back to Perro attack, attacking the West Ham United panel just outside the box Armstrong lays it wide Walker Peters had a little bit of room to get across it and then stumbled lost his footing and it's away for West Ham United I think it was Ben Rama all the way back there who cleared his lights yeah, it was well worked by Southampton, that got down the right-hand side, and I thought Walker Peters was going to put it over first time. He decided no, he tried to ch chop back, and just uh, fumbled a little bit, and the chance had slipped away. Just to give you a sense of uh, the commentary, the 5 line commentary position here, um, if this was a cricket square and we were the facing batsman, should we hit a six out towards the far left-hand corner flag, it would be one of the most enormous sixes you'd have ever seen in cricket. If you had a golf shot, what is that? It would be more like a 12, would it not? <laughs> that's a good That's a good five iron, isn't it? Away towards that far oh, corner. It's, it's a driver. It depends, it depends how good you are, I suppose. <laughs> well, sometimes I can make the women's tea, but, you know, you have to actually, don't you, if you've got the code of golf, wow. otherwise it gets rather yes. embarrassing. Now here's Ward Prowse for Walker Peters on that right hand side. Golfers will know what I mean. Now, Armstrong down the right for Southampton. Again, a dangerous run taking on Emerson. And uh, they need to double up on him, and they do. And it was uh, Paqueta back there. And West Ham United clear. Little step over by Ings, nearly brings the ball back to Paqueta. Now, when, I, when Rob was talking about characters to lead you away from a relegation area, Kazuna will get it away here for Southampton. West Ham United had it when they were ever in problems. They had a player who'd go through a mud bath at Upton Park and come away with mud and blood dripping from his beard by the name of Billy Bonds, one of the great characters to drive you on in the game of football. Do those sort of characters exist these days? You'll all have your views on that. Do you know what, though, why you were just filling us in on Billy Bonds there? Southampton played a pass back to Gavin Bazunu. It's broken off Glenn because they had a promising attack again with Walcott. No end product. Yes, they did, but Southampton passed it back to the goalkeeper and Danny Ings made a 30-yard run and it just lifted the crowd, just, just showing that desire to, to fight for your team, to close down. Even the fans fed off just something small like that and sometimes it takes that just to lift the stadium, a big tackle, a good cross, closing down as a group, lifts the whole place. It would be remiss of me not to mention the other WSL game, by the way, Everton won, Tottenham won at the moment. Everton led through Sorensen, Suman and levelling it up for Tottenham. Those goals in the first half, there's uh, five minutes gone in the second in that game. Again, the Saints look dangerous here. Armstrong with a run to the edge of the penalty area, stopped absolutely dead by a Declan Rice block challenge to get it away. West Ham fans are getting edgy. Listen to them, Glenn. They're getting very edgy already. Yeah, they are. And that'll feed onto the pitch to the players. Both sets of players may add. It'll feed to the West Ham players, but it'll also feed to the Southampton players. And they will know through that noise that they're doing something right. To throw for Southampton on the right hand side. They have picked up good results of late. The draw at Manchester United, the win at Chelsea, but then they were beaten at Leeds. Lost at home to Grimsby in the FA Cup. I commented on that game. and 
they were shocking. Grimsby played very well and very conservative, came up, got the two penalties, but Southampton were poor. Rice's pass for West Ham United on a slight angle to Kira, two yards in from the right-hand touch on the five, live nil-nil. Draws the pass back then to Kurt Zuma, who went to launch it out the right-hand side. It was blocked by Walcott, throw in Southampton. I think a reflection of the first 15 minutes when I look at both teams, there just seems to be a little bit more sharpness and energy from Southampton. West Ham, even though they've had a good break, just look a little leggy. And Southampton certainly looked the more confident side, more cohesive side. His Aga, his fitness is going to be absolutely massive for West Ham United. Good defender. We saw that in the in the World Cup, of course, with Morocco. And it's a West Ham United throw, despite the protests of Stuart Armstrong. Who, uh, He's only started now four of their last 17 games. Competent player, Scottish international played in the recent game against Cyprus. What a win that was for Scotland against Spain. Huge win. Now here's Fabianski. Just draws it away to Kurt Zuma. French international in his day. And back by Kira to his goalkeeper. Starting today for West Ham United, involved in those internationals. Aged and uh, Emerson, Rice, Socek, Paqueta. Tibet Kera was involved with Germany for Southampton. Lavia started, uh, starting today, played in the international. So did Bednarak, Bazunu, Armstrong, and Elianusi. Here's Zuma on the edge of his own penalty area. 14 minutes gone, no goals. Or 15 minutes gone, I should say, no goals. Rice has it only a couple of yards outside his own penalty area. West Ham United trying to play out from that very, very deep. Southampton pressing high and competently. And the, the clearance away out of play by Aged Sells for a throw in to Southampton, still inside the West Ham half. They cannot get out of their half of the field. No, they can't. They're trying to play the, their way through Southampton, but there just seems to be a lack of options. They end up playing into a corner and having to go long, clear out of play. And there's arms flailing in the air and there just seems to be a lack of communication between the West Ham ranks. Walker Peters on the, the right-hand side for, uh, for Southampton. Tucked back by Armstrong. And Walcott draws the ball back, almost central midfield, Ward perhaps. But they're still well inside the West Ham United half at nil nil. Walker Peters crossing them. Walcott spins and shoots. And wide it goes. Yes, he touched it with his right swiveled with his left it popped up from his first touch and he tried to volley it from a standing start couldn't get much power and was always likely to drag it wide of the target and he did just that hits the standing pole pinning the goal up behind 34 now Theo Walcott remember when he came through to England reckoning and went to the World Cup in 2006 didn't play he was a boy then really here he is at the other end of his of his career plenty of life left in him well, you played till you were about 52, didn't you? <laughs> I set myself up for that, didn't I? We have breaking news for you on Five Live. Leicester City Football Club has reached a mutual agreement with Brendan Rodgers that will see him leave the club after four years as the first team manager. We will give you more on that as we get it. Leicester City beaten at Crystal Palace yesterday and into the bottom three they go. Don't forget, you'll hear all the reaction to this game on the Football Daily Podcast via BBC Sounds. While you're there, check out Five Live Boxing with Steve Bunce. Get all the reaction to Anthony Joshua's fight from yesterday evening. Walker Peters now for Southampton down the right-hand side. It's everything here is in the West Ham half. Yes, it is. Like, like we said, West, uh, Southampton have started the better of the two. They settled into the game in the open 20 minutes. They're, they're, they've been far superior to West Ham, who have just had a lack of intensity. I mean, when you've got a game in these circumstances, in front of your own fans, the very least you can do is burst onto the field with energy and get people off their seats, and they've done the exact opposite. All right, sir confirmation on that breaking news for you but if it is indeed so Glenn what's your reaction to that well listen it's it's never nice to see a manager lose their job whenever someone's at the helm of a football club they always try their very best and they've had some good moments under Brendan Rodgers and I just can't help but feel that the World Cup break came at the wrong time for Leicester City and other factors haven't helped 
the global downturn in economy hit the owners of the club. The funding for new players has dried up. He's had to get on with what he's been given. It hasn't been easy for him. But that seems as if uh, yesterday dropping into the bottom three has cost Brendan Rodgers his job. That is now up on Twitter, I see, and has been confirmed, I believe. Now, West Ham United have a throw. Don't get excited about this because they are still... 25 yards from their own dead ball line and I don't think they've been 60 yards from their own dead ball line in the entire game so far with any sort of cohesion or any sort of threat really it comes bouncing back they cannot get it up they can't hold the ball up it's away by Emerson in sort of can-can fashion Paqueta tries to bring it down and Bowen uh, is smothered in a challenge rather cumbersome challenge it was as well by uh, Ward Prowse in there so is it's it a free kick for West Ham professional foul now yeah stop an attack that's, a lot, that's, that's the one thing that I think Southampton need to be aware of in this first half when they're so dominant, dominant in possession. It's just just getting caught cold on the back foot on a counter-attack with, uh, with the West Ham players they've got in attack. They, they can certainly hurt you. They link two or three passes together in Ben Rama, Paqueta and, and Bowen and, and then Ings at the head of that sort of diamond. If you let them get into a floor, it could be devastating. No, no, 19 minutes gone. At the London Stadium, or perhaps another sort of inspirational leader. Not old school, it's his 400th game for Southampton, and he, he's such a fine footballer. Southampton through and through, but of course from Portsmouth originally. Deadly rivals down the coast, so he comes from, I think. Now Walcott, but Southampton holds it up in support. It's Armstrong hugging that line, making the pitch big. Back to Walcott, trying to wriggle his way through, ran into Agad, and here's Declan Rice picking it up. The edge of his own penalty area. Moves out towards the right-hand side, feeds Ings, there's a foul on him. And once again, West Ham's attempt to get any sort of pattern together is stopped by a Southampton free kick. And that seems to be part of the play that Ruben Sellers, the manager, has highlighted. Stop any quick attacks. But so far, when I look at the structure of both football clubs, uh, both teams, should I say, West Ham don't seem to be on the same page and... Southampton just to seem have all the right distances between each other. They seem to be fluid in what they're doing and the understanding of what they're trying to do. And so far it's working. And Manchester City up next, Southampton. We'll be doing that game for match of the day next weekend. And then it's Crystal Palace at home. Big six points in the relegation battle. They've got Bournemouth at home yet to come. They've got Forest away of the teams around them in the table. Here's Lavia now for them. For Southampton, chunky midfielder with his red boots, and he finds Ward Prowse and away towards this left hand side. And it's poked forward then for Southampton and back again to Ward Prowse. And now Roman Lavia again to the edge of the penalty area. And Lucy trying to trick his way through in a sort of leftish midfield position, but he is playing very narrow at times. And when he does so, so Mara comes out further to the left. West Ham have bypass. Listen to this. Because they can't get out of their half. Listen to the boos. They just want their team to go forward, don't they? That's where the frustration lies. When they do get their foot in the ball, they look up and they turn back out, go backwards. And this West Ham faithful don't like it one little bit. Now they've got a chance that. So check to the uh, Ings to the left hand side. Once the ball played back to him, it's overpaced and out comes Gavin Prezuna together on the edge of the Southampton penalty area, right-hand side, rolls it into Chiletta Tsar, and on it goes into Roman Perro, the French fullback. Even though that came to nothing, the breaking lines pass from the back, and a feed through to Danny Ings behind the Southampton, back four for him to run on to. Gavin Mizunu was first on the scene, but got rapturous applause from the West Ham fans, because it's what they want to see, intent. Good challenge by Pekata on the touchline, right-hand side for West Ham, and you know, finds Bowen, he's crunched. It was a mistimed challenge by Cheleta Tsar. Bowen didn't have the ball under control, but it was beyond the Croatian defender who really crunched into it. Yes, it was awkward, wasn't it, the big man? I think Bowen just gets a slight nick on this and puts it possibly through Cheleta Tsar's legs, or he might just completely miss it altogether. Yes, both men miss it, and there's a, an awkward collision that Bowen's come off worst on, because... Coletta Sauer was committed to the challenge. Send off against Newcastle in their ill-fated League Cup 
semi final. He hasn't made an appearance in the league since the 21st of and, January. And, and Grimsby, no? I was there. I did the game. I, I can't remember. Or did he just give a penalty away for penalty. the slot on the back? Yeah, oh no, he should have. Yeah, he might have gone, but I don't think he did, did he? Can't remember. That's terrible. I can't remember that. Anyway, here's a free kick for West Ham on the right hand side. And it's curled in by Kira. Got a free header there! Won't count, I don't think. Flag is up. This will go to VAR for offside. Oh, Gavin Bazuna looks very confident because he's placed the ball down, ready to take a free kick. And we're just going to see a replay here. And you know what? Southampton have been very brave with their line. They've stayed strong. There was a number of West Ham players offside. But we're just waiting to confirm if Agard was actually offside. I'm not sure he was, you know, but there was three or four. He seems to be coming out of the bunch where he might have been onside. Yes. I think Socek is in an offside position. Rice is in an offside position, Ings is in an offside position, Emerson's offside. But to me, from that angle there, it doesn't look like Agard is offside. Well, the referee is waiting for the instruction. Paul Tierney from Peter Banks, the VAR. He stood next to the Southampton defenders there. Gavin Bazuna, was, as Glenn was saying, spotted the ball down. We're ready to get on with it. And this is an agonising wait. We've got a couple at the wrong end for West Ham this season. If I got, he hasn't scored for them. Well, whether it's allowed or not, when he got on to the end of it, it was a brilliant controlled header into the back of the net to the left of Gavin Bazuna, cushioned it. I think he's being played on there, Glenn. Yes, I, I think he's played on, but it's it's whether the four West Ham players around him that are offside are interfering with play. Well, it's difficult for us to tell here because the monitor is the smallest TV monitor in the history of the planet Earth. But uh, it is your money, the BBC licence holders' money, that pays for these things, so I'm glad we're not squandering your money on a monitor that we can actually see. But... Uh, Checking disallowed goal, offside is the big message on the giant scoreboards. Into the 90th minute, by the way, in that WSL. Arsenal 2-1 up against Manchester City. And Everton 1-1 with Tottenham. They're not sure at Stockley Park because they're zooming in, they're zooming out, they're getting close to the players, they cannot make a... They haven't even put a line on yet, have they? No. Is he... Well, what we can see, unless, unless they're giving it against Rice, for being in an offside position and blocking or, or Paqueta or Socek then for me he's onside Danny Ings is about four yards offside does he block the run the defenders run you mean as he comes back yeah they? unfortunately they're not playing the the the, the play through are they they're, they're not playing the video that it's just the still at the moment that we're looking at with no lines on so it's really really difficult to tell but this is becoming farcical it's a long way but the main thing is is that they come to the right decision because this could be a vital goal in both sides survival in the Premier League well the picture was frozen the VAR picture we were seeing here was frozen and it still is now oh here come the lines eventually this is taking far too long this is ridiculous and then we're seeing it shuttled forward I think I think Agard's on the side when he scores but we'll wait and see the message is now coming out 14 on it Goal given. West Ham lead. Yes, you can hear from the sound that West Ham goal has been given, and it's here, guard, and they have another mini little celebration in front of their fans away to the right hand side of us, whilst the Southampton players are in a, a circle. I don't know whether they're, they're composing themselves or what, but. Going back to the instance, it's quite a while ago now. Wega gets up really well. He's about 14 yards out and he just feels it back across. Gavin Bazunu into the goal. Fantastic header from the central defender. Well, it seems a long time ago when he headed it in. David Moyes, we've seen pictures of him celebrating when he got the nod that the goal had been given. And a massive one, his first for his club's first since October 20. 21 when he netted in a league and game for Renner away at Troyes 
A good player at Rennes, very good player at Rennes. He won a title uh, back in North Africa with Rabat. As uh, Southampton try and find Sekumara on the left-hand side. It's not really working for them with him out wide left and Walcott to his right-hand side. They've had a lot of possession, but what have, what have they created, Glenn? I mean, they had the Walcott one wide, but uh, Fabianski's not had to make a save yet. No, that would be the only part of Southampton's play that, that I would have a, a question about, really, is they've been in some really good positions and not created too much, but going back to the West Ham goal, what a time to get your first Premier League goal for Agard. I mean, such vital situation that they find themselves in, and already... The place seems a little bit easier, doesn't it, Jonathan? I think we've got full time at Arsenal Manchester uh, Manchester City in the Super League. Here's Flo Pollock. Arsenal 2, Manchester City 1. City took advantage of Arsenal's tired legs, scored early, but second half Arsenal refused to lose. Marlon scored from close range. 75 minutes, Katie McCabe scored a screamer. Arsenal up to second, full-time Arsenal 2, Man City 1. And Southampton have just had a really good opportunity and it's took a fine save by Babianski to deny Perro up from left-back who drove it, left-footed, low, hard, aimed to the far corner. Babianski got down, stretched, pushed it away for a Saints corner. That's a brilliant save, that, because it goes through Agard's legs. He's not far in front of Fabianski, he gets down low. A fantastic save. Corner taken short, ballooned into the box by Warprouse, comes back out. There's Perro again with a drive, claiming handball there against the West Ham United player who went down in front of him and tried to smother it, but no free kick given. And West Ham United now have possession on the right hand side with Ben Rahm on five live. In comes across, had to cover was Warprouse. His header comes out to Paqueta, pings a pass into Socek, it's not yet away. And then Ben Rama tried to force it through to Bowen. All of a sudden, there's a, it's not relaxed, but there is an easier feel about the London Stadium from West Ham United fans. But more importantly, their players are beginning to string passes together, Claire. Yeah, there's more of a buoyancy to their play, a bit more life in their passing, a little bit more speed in the passes. Passes forward. I mean, that has been the problem so far in the first half an hour of this game for West Ham. He's finding forward passes, but a little bit more belief in their play after that goal. A bit more confidence. Time to have draw breath and reflect on the fact that's a very, very tight 14 title race in the WSL and a Man United 41 points and Man City and Arsenal 38 and Chelsea 37 have yet to play. They play at Villa tonight. Here comes Southampton down the right-hand side with Walker-Peters. Again, he's made great strides into the West Ham. Ha! Pulls it off to Walcott. Walcott back to Ward-Prowse. In comes his cross. Away by again at the back for West Ham United to the halfway line. Picked up there by Cheleta Saar. The £8 million signing in the transfer window last summer from Marseille. Now Armstrong is switched to a more central position momentarily for Southampton. They try and burrow their way through, but it takes a good challenge for West Ham. You know, Sotek and Bowen combined to get the ball back for the home side. We drive forward down that left-hand side now into the Southampton half. The ball is released forward by Emerson. Emerson to the dead ball line, checks back. In front of him is Ward Prowse, three claret and blue shirts in the penalty area. West Ham leading by a goal to nil. Low cross, bit of a dribbler though. No pace or power on the cross and collected by Gavin Bazuna. Yeah, it was. He just needed a West Ham player to be attacking that front post with some intent. But unfortunately, it took so long to get the ball in. I think they thought he was going to recycle the ball around the edge of the 18-yard box. He doesn't. He drops the shoulder, puts the ball in. No one reacts. We will keep you up to date, by the way, as the afternoon unfolds at Wembley. Bolton Wanderers against Plymouth Argyle and the Papa John's Trophy final. 38,000 up from the West Country to see that. They beat Bolton at home 2-0 in the league. It was 0-0 away. And above them, a couple of places above them, aren't they, in the uh, league on table? Three places, I think it is, above them. But a uh, proud day. Bolton Wanderers, of course, at one stage. Wembley Stadium. Uh, not their second home, but they were there regularly. Here come West Ham United, nice interchange between Emerson and Ben Rama to the dead ball line. Ben Rama's crossing the middle, it's forced away by uh, Elianusi back defending inside his own six-yard area. Sort of got his flank on the ball to edge it away for a corner. And all of a sudden West Ham are playing. And this is an extremely important time for Southampton. After playing so well in the opening of the game, they need to stay in it. They can't concede another, another would be... A terrible first half, especially with the way they've played. They wouldn't deserve it, but West Ham wouldn't care. 
on a kick for West Ham United on their right hand side it will be taken by Jared Bowen left footed Walcott little hop at the near post headed it away and he sprints out to close down on the attempted second ball in by Bowen doesn't get there in time it's a dangerous ball and up goes Bazzuno to take it in the air under a little bit of pressure once again by Naya Vaget. yeah so you has got the taste for it hasn't he just springing that offside trap again trying to get his head on it but Bazzuno reads it comes out collects the ball quite comfortably and against goal after 25 minutes separates the sides he actually scored it a week last Thursday, but it took that long for VAR to make the decision. <laughs> Here's Armstrong. Just gets away from the Declan Rice challenge. Just stumbles after he gives a free kick. Well, uh, Southampton have worked it well down, especially the right-hand side to Walker Peters, and Walcott drifts out there, but when they get on the ball, they look in the box and they haven't really got any physicality in there, especially when you've got Agard and Zuma sat in looking out. Just wonder... What Ruben Sellers can do to change that? It's a free kick to be taken by Ward Prowse. The manager for Southampton watches out for the touchdown away to our left hand side, played in tight to Armstrong, tried to wriggle his way beyond Paqueta, who got a big block challenge in. Now West Ham United can counter on their left with Ben Rama. Sees a good run forward. Kara is the man furthest forward. Oh, his touch let him down. It's a lovely ball up to him, bounced, kicked, kicked up a little bit high, but his touch let him down and went through to Bazunu. Big chance. Awful touch, wasn't it? Comes across and all he needs to do is set himself on his first touch and he gets a shot at goal one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Raises his foot, it comes off his shin and bounces about 15 yards in front of him and Gavin Bazunu collects very, very happily. It was a touch of a man who has eight goals in 232 career games. <laughs> Uh, here's Lavia for Southampton, back then towards Chiletta Tsar. Saw a lot of him over the last few years playing for Marseille. And uh, I always struck, it always struck me that he wasn't the most secure of a defender through 90 minutes. Big, strong defender, 26 years of age, good age. And certainly aggressive enough and willing enough, but Too there was aggressive. a mistake in him. There was a mistake in him, yeah, I agree with that. I think he gets it wrong at times. Elinusi for Southampton. His touch let him down. Runs through to Rice. Passes diagonally to the right-hand side. Bowen. Lovely ball. Caressed away to Emerson who crosses the halfway line. He did not see this game turning out like this after the first 25 minutes when West Ham United simply couldn't get out of their heart. They have possession now. Paqueta. Five yards in from the right touch line. Equidistant inside the Southampton half. They plays it back to Zuma and across to his left hand side is his centre back partner, the dark haired Agat. They look for Ben Rama, a little bit, a little bit sloppy. Didn't anticipate the ball coming on. He was dispossessed, but as Southampton play it forward, Sekumara, his touch is all over the place. He looks to me as if he's absolutely devoid of confidence. He's only 20 years of age. Yeah, he does. He's not, he's not the biggest physically. He was in a really good position there. Just lifts his foot to control the ball. Unfortunately for the young man, it runs right under it. But if he did get a touch on it, it'd have been one-on-one -on -one with Zuma. And he'd have asked questions of him because I know he likes to get shots off. Bowen, West Ham United attacking now on five right. They lead 1-0. It's Kera who's bundled his way into the box with a couple of lucky bounces. In comes a shot from Ben Rama. Curling, arcing, dipping, but over. Yes, Kira bundled his way through towards the West Ham, eight, uh, sorry, the South Ham 18 yard box. He spots Ben Rama on the edge of the area, rolls a lovely weighted pass that the Ben Rama can meet his first time. Tries to put a bit too much dip and swerve on it, looking for that top corner, and it just seals over the top of Bazunu's goal. Results so far for you in the Scottish Premiership Ross County nil, Celtic 2. Celtic then restoring their nine-point gap at the top of the table. And in the WSL, Arsenal beat Manchester City 2-1. Goes second, Everton 1-1 with Spurs with about 18 minutes to go in that game. 1-0 to West Ham United here in the Premier League with Walker-Peters, right fullback then for Southampton into Walker, coming away from the goal, fizzed it in to Mara. It, was, it came at him at an awkward height and at a fizzy sort of pace, but his touch once again lacked any sort of confidence or composure. This is a man who came from Bordeaux. He played 36 games at Bordeaux in five years, was a Southampton, was a PSG Academy boy, didn't make it there. He looks at the moment as if this is too big a thing for him. Yes, on the afternoon I think he does. That just bounces off him, that ball there, doesn't it? And I think when the camera zoomed in on him, he's 
mannerisms were very dour, low, seemed like you say void of confidence but do you know what, it only takes one to go in off your knee and all of a sudden you seem like a player again, he'll feel like a player again, he just needs that little break, that little bit of luck to go his way and so does Southampton. Player brought for the future with his potential is Sekumara. They have brought in several players to sort of change their policy, Southampton, bringing in youngsters like Lavia, who's what, 20, uh, 19 years of age, they put him in from Manchester City for 10 million, a fair few players came from Manchester City last summer, Gavin Bazuno, for example, the goalkeeper, he'd uh, been at Man City three years, didn't make a first time appearance, but they are buying for the future, they've remodelled. Yeah, you can't help but feel if they can stay in the Premier League this year, this group will grow and the only way is up for them because there is a lot of talent in it, just very young at the moment. West Ham look for Bowen. Header was won by Chilet at Saha. Away it goes for a throw in then to West Ham United. Right hand side and Chilo Kera will play. Played in both of the recent German games. A little five minute run out against Peru and then in the defeat against Belgium. It's a great result that for Belgium, by the way. 3 2 away from home. Declan Rice now for West Ham United. Plays it through. Blocked by Lavia. Has a chance to get it away. Closed quickly by Paqueta, who went the other side of it, who went down, no free kick given. Then Paqueta stretched out a foot, Lavia flopped theatrically, no free kick given. Referee was well placed. <laughs> That's a lovely symbol there by the referee, a little hand signal to suggest you flopped forward. West Ham United, Emerson has it on the left-hand side of the penalty, in comes across. And deflect, important deflection, actually, by Armstrong back defending, and it's thumped away. But West Ham United, having looked so insipid, now look fairly dangerous. Yes, they do. Build the momentum. Seems to be getting a lot of joy down that left-hand side. And in particular, it's Emerson that keeps breaking the line. He's got in good positions on a number of occasions. Just possibly the wrong decision or the wrong ball into the box. And not quite found a West Ham, West Ham body there yet. West Ham out possession inside their own half. It's Zuma. Zuma turns, looks out to the right-hand side, wearing gloves, customary for him. Pushed down the line by Kira, and there's a, a, a little nudge in the back of Bowen by Roman Perro. And it's a free kick for West Ham United, virtually on the halfway line. Yeah, it was a soft one there from Perro. He had Bowen going back towards his own goal at quite a pace. There's no danger to him. Gives a soft free kick away. I'm sure Southampton manager, right at his feet, wouldn't be happy. Fabianski now, the West Ham United goalkeeper, an eighth clean sheet this season will mean that West Ham United have picked up three incredibly important points on five loud. They're 1-0 up with, what, some three minutes to go before the half-time interview, but Mohamed Elinousi has it now for Southampton, down their left, gaining yards, scampers beyond Paqueta, carries and he just got back at him, he's allowed to run a long way, his cross is pushed away by Fabianski, only to the edge of the penalty area. And uh, the shot eventually was charged down, Well, Prowse's shot was charged down, and the Bowen is caught by a lunging, lunging challenge. Really poor challenge, that. Racing out from the back for Southampton was Chaleta Saar, committed himself 70 yards upfield and careered into the challenge and gets himself a yellow. Well, we were just chatting about him not long ago and his aggression, and we've seen it firsthand there. Ridiculous challenge, he's never getting to the ball. Sad to take the player because he was so far out of position. But you know what? He's a very, very lucky boy. He's just picked up a yellow card there on Bowen. And only a couple of minutes ago, there was a collision with Bowen as well. It was awkward. And he could have picked up a yellow there. Lucky to still be on the pitch. Certainly is. A lovely move, actually, by Southampton. Zeli Nusi down the left-hand side moments before that, pushing uh, Fabianski in to make the save. And he punched the cross away. Now, Rice looks for the ball into the inside right channel to Ings, wide of him on the right hand touchline, Socek tries to get his way wide of Perro, who forces out of play, West Ham lead by a goal to nil, and they'll take the throw in at their own leisure you don't think here that Tilo Kerr is going to be rushed into it, not in this position with a couple of minutes left in the first half West Ham United fans keep walking down past us, giving us a smile as they take their positions up behind us Reminds me of a story when I was commentating with the great late Bobby Moore at Upton Park. I'll tell you about that. If we have a moment, half time, maybe Crossy will allow me to have a moment. Here's Zuma away towards the far side. It's headed away by Walker Peters. And it's collected there on their right by Armstrong. Goes over, looks to the referee plaintively. 
just to throw for West Ham United, try and steal a couple of yards with it. Ben Rama, basically we were commentating, Glenn and a West Ham United fan behind us was swearing very loudly into the effects microphone and uh, very, very badly. And the producer said, you've got to stop him swearing, you've got to stop it. Bobby, stop him swearing. And Bobby turned around, had a look and then comes back and says, no, the six foot four inch giant shaven-headed, much tattooed West Ham United fan <laughs> can say exactly what he wants. <laughs> well, I tend to agree with him. Uh, it's played out to Chiletta Tsar. And on the left fullback position, it's backed by Perro. Chiletta Tsar then switches it. Big diagonal, 40, 50 yards, drops down to Walker Peters, still halfway inside his own half. Nice take. Rolls it back then to Bednarak, takes the return. Good pressure on him though. Ben Rama's over there on the case, and Socek too. And they're forcing Southampton back here as we edge towards the 45 minute mark and West Ham leading 1 0. But they do get it away. Suspicion of a handball by Ellen Nusi. Southampton now can't get out of their half and it's forced forward by Paqueta. Cleared. Paqueta will close on this near side and he gets there a little bit late. But the referee says it's no free kick for the challenge on Perra. What it is is a Southampton throw in. throw that we taken by Roman Perro. The fourth official is showing there will be three minutes of stoppage time. Southampton very much still in the game and I would imagine that their coach Ruben Seles will be telling them just repeat what you did at the start of the half and there's a way back into this game for you. Armstrong loses possession, centre circle, West Ham have it, back to Emerson, lengthening his stride, pushes the ball inside left channel, out by Socek, to Ben Rama, in to Danny Ings, oh, he stepped over it, and it's looped back towards his own goal there by a Southampton defender, Chaletta Tsar, it's over the bar for a corner, but it's offside against Danny Ings in the first place, I think. Yeah, and I think that's probably why Danny Ings decided to step over it, he knew it was just slightly offside, just strayed a little bit early with his run, he's usually so good at timing that run, this time he steps over it, knowing that there's no one really beyond him. Which let the sign nearly put in his own goal. Southampton take the free kick for offside. Here is Tushi Chaletta Tsar and Ward Prowse. Tucks the ball back then towards Romeo Lavia. Hard working midfielder and a couple of appearances he played for Manchester City before they sold him off. That's where he learned his game though under Pep Guardiola. That's out of play. Throw to West Ham on the far side. And it will be taken by Emerson. Rice into his own penalty, back to him by Aguer. Changes feet left to right, chops the clearance up. Socek jumps in the air, misses it. Hit Walker Peters. West Ham play on, the referee plays on. And he's bowing into the penalty area. He's got a man over on the right hand side, and Paqueta in front of a lovely bad effort. It rocks the bar, comes back. And Paqueta, the dangerous still on for Southampton. Cross. Blocked by Chiletta Sar. Southampton still have the player down in Walker Peters. They can't get out at the moment. No free kick given for the challenge on Walker Peters in the air by Socek, by the way. And on we go. West Ham United on the left hand side. Ben Rama has it. Rolls it to the left hand side of the penalty area. Emerson cuts into the box. Stabbed away by Chiletta Tsar. Declan Rice, great cries of shoot. He was 30 yards out. Plays it instead to Kera. Hangs across far post up goes Gavin Pizzuno and a good catch by the Irish international goalkeeper and the half-time whistle will blow him into the uh, I would have thought well danger there as uh, Southampton the game has stopped for them to get some treatment onto Walker Peters good effort wasn't it that rocked the bar yeah it was a brilliant effort Bowen gets away cuts back onto his right foot he decides to just look for that far corner not too much pace on it more precision just gets it slight wrong hits the bar but you know what, if he got his head up after he cut back in his right foot, Paqueta was making a fast stick run, he could have played it into his feet. He'd have been one-on-one -on -one with Bazunu, a much easier chance. Don't think he quite spotted him and went very, very close to scoring. Scored in the last game, the 4 win against AEK. Uh, Cyprus to take them through the next round of the, of the uh, conference. They'll play Ghent, the place in the semi-finals. Look at the games they've got. I reckon they've got a good 12 points in them, West Ham, which will take them to 36 in the table. And look at Southampton. We all play this game, don't we? Well, they can win that one, they'll get a draw in that one, and so on and so on. I think they, they can get to 34. 35. 35 will keep you up, I think, in the, in the Premier League this year. The average over that, recent years has been 36. I think 35. Yeah, will well, whenever we set out at a football club, you'd always work on a point a game if you if you could get a point a game that would usually keep you in the Premier League just be below that this season 
lot of teams will take points off each other. High ball forward then for Southampton. We're deep in stoppage time now. Lavia's headed to the right-hand touchline. Armstrong brings it under control. Has a look. Got a runner up down the line in Walcott. Pulls it back then to Walker-Peters is OK now. Into his own half he finds Big Jan Bednarak. Bednarak, the Polish international. Just dwells on the ball. There's no movement up front for them at all. They trail 1-0. Back again it comes then to Jan Bednarak. They both in Poland's recent game. Both of Poland's recent games. Now he finds Mara. Back to Chaleta Tsar. And there's the half-time whistle. West Ham United won to the good. Took a while before it was confirmed. But Aguirre's goal gives them that 1-0 league left. Yes, it does. And in all fairness, it was against the runner play because Southampton started this game much, much better. They were on the front foot. They were controlling and dictating the play. Didn't really create too much. Off the back of that, Southampton get a free kick. Agar gets his head on it. And all of a sudden, it's 1-0. The mood's lifted around the Olympic Stadium. And from that point on, West Ham look to, to stretch that lead, hitting the bar. It goes in 1-0 at halftime. Southampton look like a team at the moment that have scored, I think it's just six goals in their last six games in all their shot shy and they're 1-0 down at the break stick. Uh, Glenn, before we talk about the goal itself, the, the timing was absolutely huge because the two of you made the point in commentary, you know, after, what, 25 minutes, it was already starting to sound a little bit toxic from the home fans before the goal went in. Yeah, I think that's probably a bit harsh, the word toxic, but there was there was groans of unhappiness, definitely, and it was only going to get worse and worse. They were trying to play through, they couldn't find the passes, they were having to go long. Southampton's game plan was working exceptionally well, they just couldn't really create anything. They got a lot of good, opportun uh, good areas, but couldn't quite work something of anything to, to, to have a shot on goal or, have, or, or question Fabianski. But yeah, like you say, the timing of the goal was it was imperative. I mean, it was a, a ball into the box. Here, guy gets his head on it. It was a brilliant header. Had to wait a long time. There was a lot of anxiety around the Olympic Stadium. But once that goal was given, it was uh, it was a different game of football. Jonathan, as you uh, as you well know, one of the great features of the BBC Sounds app is that you can rewind the live commentary. And if you were to do that today, as I did, you would find a three and a half minute gap between the ball hitting the back of the net and the goal being given which given the still that we were all looking at is an awful long time well it, it was and when when we realized that it had been given for offside although the linesman when he flagged didn't drop it he should he should lower the flag so that it's sort of half mast steve that mm. denotes that there's an offside in the middle of the goal he didn't do that he, his flag was high and waving but we realized who he flagged it for the goal scorer now w as soon as the replays came on our little monitor and it is postage stamp by the way the monitor but we realized Aguirre's on site we could see it we could see it and that took what one minute yeah. and you're saying it took three and a half minutes if it took three and a half minutes they can't be sure if they can't be sure then they go with the referee's decision and the referee's decision initially was was uh, was to give it a goal and it was the, the linesman who, who, who didn't give it it's just it, it just took far far too long for the playing public uh, yeah, and I suppose in defence of the of the officials, there have been errors made in drawing the lines at times this season. So with so many players in the box, I suppose what they wanted to do was make absolutely sure. And in the end, it was the right decision. It was onside. And West Ham lead Southampton by a goal to nil. Jonathan Pearce and Glenn Murray commentary team will be back for the second half. Of course, England in action in the Women's Six Nations this afternoon, taking on Italy. Simon Middleton's side looking to build on that big 58-7 win over Scotland on the opening weekend. And Nicola Goodwin is there for us. And Marley Packer captains the side from Openside this afternoon with vice captain Zoe Oldcroft at number eight, following Sarah Hunter's retirement after that time try victory over Scotland last week. England have never lost against Italy in their 16 previous encounters, and despite the continued improvements to from today's opposition, we're expecting another high score here at Northampton's Franklin's Gardens. Italy are running out in front of me. The sun is shining. The 14,000 strong crowd are in fine voice, as you can hear. They are eager for a tri fest of rugby this afternoon. That one's underway at three o'clock. You can watch it as well on BBC Two. Also underway in the next few minutes, Saracens Ospreys in the European Champions Cup. Live commentary on Sports Extra with James Burridge and Chris Ashton. Ospreys have already beaten the French champions Montpellier and the English champions Leicester. So it's going to be a tough afternoon for Saracens. The top line is...
is that Owen Farrell is fit. He's recovered from the ankle injury he picked up last weekend against Harlequins. The starting 15 unchanged, both the Vunapola brothers included. The Ospreys, well, they brought 11 starting internationals. Tipperick, Alan Wynne jones Rhys Webb, George North, to name a few. Their first appearance in the knockout stages since 2010. And given the upheaval in Welsh rugby financially right now, a number of players still out of contract at the end of the season. It feels like this is their last chance to produce something special in Europe. James Burridge will bring you commentary on Sports Extra. The other game in the competition has gone to extra time. It's currently Exeter Chiefs 26, Montpellier 26. There's one match in Super League about to get underway this afternoon as well. It's Huddersfield at Salford. That's where we find correspondent Dave Woods. Yeah, Salford three wins from six this season, capable of beating anyone on the day, and they are electrifying to watch at times, but unlucky losers at Wigan last week. Huddersfield come here on the back of two narrow defeats against Saints and Wigan. You'd expect them to be involved in the playoff race at the end of the year, so this could be very tight and very entertaining today. Uh, Dave, thank you very much. Elsewhere today in the WSL, massive result at the top of the table. Arsenal beat Manchester City by two goals to one. Uh, it's currently Everton won, Tottenham won. That game is in its closing stages. Later, West Ham play Liverpool at five o'clock. Chelsea face Aston Villa. There's full commentary of that game from 6pm on Five Sports Extra. Uh, on Brendan Rodgers, who has left Leicester City this afternoon, a statement here from the chairman, Iowa Srivana Prapas, is the achievement of the team under Brendan's management speak for themselves. We've experienced some of football's finest moments under his guidance. We will always be grateful. However, performances and results have been below our shared expectations. Regrettably, the desired improvement has not been forthcoming with 10 games of the season remaining. The board is compelled to take alternative action to protect our Premier League status. So I know people use the phrase, you know, mutual consent, but Brendan Rodgers has clearly been sacked as manager of Leicester City. We'll have more on that and we'll be at St. James's Park for the first time as well ahead of Newcastle Manchester United full commentary of that at half past four all of that to come after the news with Carl Hartley Listen on BBC Sounds this is BBC Radio 5 Live Thanks Steve the Home Secretary at Swala Braverman has rejected suggestions that Brexit is to blame for long delays at the port of Dover Labour is accusing the government of failing to plan for more paperwork checks as some coaches that arrived yesterday were still there this morning Morning. Our correspondent Simon Jones is in Dover. If you come through the port on a coach, each passenger has to get off that vehicle and then show their passport to the French authorities because the French do their checks here on British soil and have their passport stamped. And that is adding to the length of time it's taking to get all these passengers through. The BBC has been told that there are positive updates in the case of the British men arrested by the Taliban in Afghanistan. It's understood that two of them have been able to speak to their families for the first time since their arrest in January. The government say negotiations are taking place to secure their release. A four-year-old girl has been taken to hospital after falling from a window of a home in Aberdeenshire. Police Scotland say an investigation is now underway. Her condition is unknown. Pope Francis has held Palm Sunday Mass at the Vatican just the day after being discharged from hospital following treatment for bronchitis. The 86-year-old appeared before worshippers in St Peter's Square. And a senior French political politician is being criticised by some for appearing on the cover of the adult magazine Playboy. Marlene Schiappa has defended her decision to take part in the photo shoot and interview on women's rights. Critics, though, say it sends the wrong message at a time of widespread unrest in France. Why is it called a smart speaker? Because it's smart. You ask it to do something and it'll be done. Just say, smart speaker, ask BBC Sounds to play your favourite music mix. Oh, that's nice. Or you can say, ask BBC Sounds to play that brand new podcast. Ooh. And you can even ask BBC Sounds to pause, rewind and restart live radio on your smart speaker. If only everything in life is that simple. For music, radio and podcasts, on most smart speakers, just say, smart speaker, ask BBC Sounds. Five Lives Premier League Sunday with Steve Crossman. 
West Ham won Southampton nil. Second half commentary on the way. Underway in the next minute. Bolton, Plymouth at Wembley in the final of the Papa John's Trophy. Henry Moran. Good afternoon, Steve. A special day for both of these promotion-chasing League One clubs. They play in front of over 70,000 here at Wembley. A hundred years ago, Bolton won the first FA Cup final to be held at the old Wembley. This is their 14th visit. Keep an eye out for Dion Charles up front. He's leading scorer. Bags a couple for Northern Ireland in the recent international break. Plymouth have brought over 38,000 here for what's just their third visit. This will be the biggest crowd they've ever played in front of. It is raucous here, to put it mildly. Can't wait for this one cracking atmosphere on a sunny afternoon in the capital. Sounds absolutely fantastic there and it will sound brilliant as well at St James's Park at 4.30. Huge game in the Premier League. Newcastle United against Manchester United. That's where we find correspondent John Murray and Chris Waddle and we will come on to that, John. Yes, yes. It's all quiet, it's all quiet here at the moment but yeah. everyone who is here is talking about Leicester City. Of course Not about they are. Newcastle United or Manchester United just is, at the moment. Is it difficult to see it as a shock despite all the achievements that I that I rattled through before? Um, it feels like it's been a long time coming, in all honesty. Mm. And and obviously there were difficulties. There have been difficulties all the way through the course of this season, whether it's been financial or whether it's been with injuries. And, you know, remember very early in the season, there was the whole business over for Fana. And, you know, so there was some ill feeling there around the place right at the start of the season. And looking back on it now, it feels like in some ways that, that kind of set the tone for what was to come. I remember very clearly there Brendan Rodgers saying that the, the money side was a real problem for, for Leicester City. They were having to balance their books at the time and of course results haven't been what they would have wanted. I mean they've had some great times under him. Uh, they will remember him. When when time passes by, you know, they will remember him so fondly for that FA Cup final victory and also what he did in his early days, you know, two high finishes, fifth place finishes in the Premier League, but particularly that day at Wem Wembley winning the FA Cup for the first time, the only time in the club's history. Great days that they had under him, Chris Waddle, but you know they're in the situation that they're in, and unfortunately, you can't put that sentimentality into a decision. I imagine. No, I think you've got to look at as clubs uh, can't afford to go to the Premier League. A lot of clubs will come up budget for the first season and think, but nobody would dream of Leicester going down. Let's be perfectly honest about the teams in the league. Uh, you look at the league table this year, and you wouldn't have put Leicester near that bottom three, four. So uh, it's a surprise to me. As John said, he's had problems. Uh, I think key players have left as well, you know, uh, all bright and experienced in the change room. Definitely Smeichel, massive loss, uh, your goalkeeper, captain. You know, he's been there for years. When he went to Nice, that was a very strange move when I looked and saw, saw that. Um, and as John said, they've had financial difficulties in, in transfer markets. He's brought players in. Uh, whether the standard of what they're used to, um, I don't think they are. But uh, I think Brendan Rodgers has done a very good job with with the, the players he's had to work with and what he's been available to say. I think he's done a very good job and I'm surprised, that, uh, to be honest, uh, they got rid. But you know how many teams have pressed, pressed the panic button this season and there's a lot of them. Um, they cannot afford to drop out of this league. Yeah, You're I just having a look, Steve. I think it's mm. 11 now. So over half of the teams in the Premier League have sacked their managers this season. And every team, John, from Bournemouth down, apart from West Ham in the Premier League table at the moment. That's right, yes. And um, I think you look at the games that, that Leicester have got left, and, and I was actually wondering this week, have we reached the cut-off point where now yeah. clubs will actually stick with what they've got? But clearly the answer <laughs> to that is no. And a large part of that is the fact that when it doesn't matter which fixture list you look at of whatever team it is down there in that part of the table, it's absolutely jam-packed full of games that you would call must-win. And, you know, that's ever, the case for Leicester is the same as it is for everyone else. Aston Villa at home on Tuesday night, then Bournemouth at home on Saturday are their next two. A year ago, Newcastle weren't a million miles away from these kind of conversations, but times have very much changed, John Murray. And, uh, well, this is a huge game for them, of course it is, and for Manchester United. Yes, it is. And they've steadied things, Newcastle, since the, that run of three defeats in a row, which, of course, included the, the Carabao Cup final just 35 days ago when Manchester United beat them there. Um, but they've, they've won the last two matches against Wolves and Nottingham Forest. And the result of that, plus Manchester United dropping points, is that today, when Casemiro, who is suspended again and was so important in the Cup final, if Newcastle United win this, they go above Manchester United and Tottenham in the Premier League table. And such is the importance of Casemiro, Chris Waddle, that even you know, even in that League Cup final, that, that Manchester United really won 
won comfortably. You know, his absence, is that above all others in terms of the absence of one player and the impact it can have on them? No, I think he makes Man United, uh, it balances the team well. You know, he's, he screens the centre-halves, he can come and play in midfield. He joins in, he keeps the ball moving. Listen, he's been playing around Madrid for years. He's a very, very top top professional footballer and he will be a miss. But on the other side of it, McTominay say if he plays, well, he's bang in form. You know, he's scoring goals for Scotland. Uh, he'll be full of confidence. Um, and, and I've always said with players, you know, it, it, when you train with good players, learn from them. And if you don't, you, you, there's something wrong with you. Now, McTominay, yes, he's been at Man United a long time. He's seen and played with some great Man United players, but... He should be looking at Casemiro on training and reading what he does and trying to think, you know, and asking questions about things. And this is how you learn, you know. It's not about coaches all the time. Sometimes you learn from other players. So, you know, McTominay come today should be full of confidence and they'll be thinking, well, we might miss Casemiro, obviously, but not as much as you think. Uh, John, Chris, thank you very much for the time being. A 94th minute goal for Everton, who've beaten Tottenham by two goals to one in the WSL. Second half is about to get underway at the London Stadium, but we've had a goal at Wembley, Henry. Just four minutes gone, Bolton Wanderers have the lead, cross of the back post from the corner, Carl Dempsey rising highest and nod it home, back across goal, it's Bolton 1, Plymouth 0. West Ham players just beginning to emerge from the tunnel there, manager David Moyes has been under pressure of course throughout this season, Southampton couldn't capitalise on the unease at the London Stadium in the early stages, this is a huge 45 minutes in both of their Premier League seasons. Glenn Murray is with Jonathan Pitts. Thanks very much, Steve. Outcome West Ham United then. Southampton's players were out uh, around about 90 seconds ago, waiting for West Ham to emerge. Can't see any signs of a half-time substitution. Just musing over whether or not the former Southampton manager, Ralph Hasenhutl, would now come into the reckoning to replace Brendan Rodgers, or whether Rafa Benitez would, because he's been linked with West Ham United, and so the machinations will turn between now and the end of the season. But Brendan Rodgers, that's the, the big news this afternoon in the world of Premier League football, has departed Leicester City. West Ham United kick us off and underway. The bubbles blown by the big machines down on pitch side are just filtering away through the rather warm spring air. I'm warm anyway. <laughs> Glenn Murray's just raised eyebrows. Lovely blue skies overhead and uh, with the white clouds. And uh, it's going to be Southampton kicking from left to right in this second half then who need to come back from this goal down West Ham with uh, Fabianski in goal and Kira Zuma Aged and Emerson the back for Aged's header separating the sides Socek and Rice in midfield Bowen Paqueta and Ben Rama the supporting forwards behind Danny Ings the Saints Gavin Pozzuno in goal then you've got Walker Peters Bednarak Chaleta Tsar cautioned in the first half and Perro had a good attempt Lavia and Warprouse holding in midfield and then you've got Armstrong wide on the right Elian Nusi wide-ish on the left though he has cut in up several times going narrow allowing Perry to come forward and then Walcott and Mara the front two do we see enough in that first half Southampton for you Glenn to suggest they can come back into this well in terms of possession and intent yes but as far as shots on target go they only asked one question of Fabianski and that was Peru from a, a cross shot and it was a really good save but they need more they look a little bit blunt in attack and can't help but that they've missed their main goal scorer, Che Adams, this afternoon. Everton have beaten Tottenham in the WSL, by the way. Aggie Beaver Jones got the winning goal, 1 2 1. That was four minutes into stoppage time. Here's Carl Walker Peters for Southampton into the heart of midfield. Lavia, who's been busy in there, but a lot of his passes have gone square out wide to the fullback if he's on, and he tried to find Walker Peters there again. Strong challenge on the England international, and he'll take the throw in, the former. Tottenham player who's missed games this season was out for a month uh, early in 2023 with a hamstring had that injury uh, from October through to Christmas as well Armstrong down the line Walcott was there wouldn't come through to him though now Rice intercepts for West Ham very very tight try to find Ben Rama and the ball rolls out of play for a throw in to Southampton I was actually just looking at the Premier League table at half time and taking it in a little bit and that has propelled, well this would, should I say, propel West Ham up to 14th, just above Forest and Bournemouth, all on the same points, 27, but they've got a far superior goal difference, minus 9, 
compared to Forrest and Bournemouth's minus 20 and minus 27 and minus 28 respect. And they still have a game in hand. And you have Newcastle here in the week, then they go to Fulham, who seem to be fading a little bit. The uh, suspension and earlier injury to Mitrovic hasn't helped them. Then there's the European game, sandwiched between the two ties, Arsenal here. Always a feisty affair, that one. Now Lavia has it. On an angle, he finds Walker Peters plodding into the West Ham half, right hand side, yarding from the touchline, turns back again. Red number two on his white shirt, back then towards uh, Ro Romeo Lavia. And now Chiletta Tsar has it, left hand side of the Southampton defence, over the halfway line. Plays in tight towards Walcott, dropping deep, back again to the Southampton. There's nothing wrong with this sort of football from Southampton. No, but you've got to be a little bit more penetrative. You've got to create opportunities. But I'm just looking at the, the West Ham lineup, and it looks like Sujek's gone a little bit higher, and it, it looks almost like a 4-4-1-1 a four, four, one, one now, doesn't it? Sujek seems to be the highest midfielder for West Ham, which is quite surprising, given Ben Rama and Paqueta in there. Yeah, Ben Rama and uh, Bowen dropping sort of deeper. And Paqueta certainly dropping deeper. Here is Sochet. Maybe they've given it, played him higher to hold the ball up. He failed to do it. Mara into the penalty area. Walcott's got goal side momentarily of Aga, but he got goal side because he was offside. And that's going to be a, a free kick for West Ham United. Lead 1 0, 5 live on the BBC. So far, West Ham will be very happy with how this game is panning out in total control. Southampton don't look like there's many goals in them. West Ham just need to see this out. Keep a clean sheet, you get three points. Goal at Wembley, the Papa John's trophy final. Bolton led 1-0 the last time we were with Henry Morat. They now lead 2-0. It's a brilliant goal down the right-hand side, working it across goal. And there was Dion Charles, leading scorer, 19th of the season. Bolton 2, Plymouth 0. With uh, Plymouth's first visit to Wembley Stadium. And as Henry was saying, a while back, I think Bolton have been there 14 times now. It's Southampton attacking on their left-hand side. Perro again coming forward willingly. In comes across, just too high for Walker. He's edged it on into the penalty. Armstrong chops it back to the far post. Elianusi arriving. Good defending there, though, by the right-back. Kira gets it away for West Ham United. Paqueta, far side, left-hand side for West Ham. Oh, he squeezed a lovely little nutmeg through uh, with a little sort of back heel flick to get the danger away, but Southampton come back. Ward Prowse is Armstrong, 10 yards outside the box. Plum dead centre, finds Walcott, right-hand corner of the penalty area. Back it goes to Walker Peters, little chip into the penalty area. Armstrong tried to force it on, Agge blocks and just scoots out of play for a Southampton throw in. And their fans at that end of the ground, away to our right-hand side, respond. A lot of them standing down there in both the lower tier and in the upper tier of the, of the ground. And uh, it'll be cleared away now for West Ham United by Declan Rice. It, it is a stadium where there's huge disconnects all round because the Athletic Stadium, of course, and then they filled in with the lower tiers, originally temporary seating, and there are big gaps. And it, it is the most, it is one of the strangest football grounds I've ever been to. It's not a football ground, of course, but it's trying to grow into one better than it was. That's a foul for West Ham United, but the referee says play on. And when West Ham United fans generate an atmosphere here, it can be cacophonous. And they've got a chance now to raise their voices. Oh, it just wouldn't go stick with Ben Rama. A mistake by Ben Rat, misjudged the flight of the ball, missed his kick, but uh, it's out of play for a throw in. Still a West Ham United advantageous position here. Let's go to the. Uh, Women's Six Nations and England against Italy. Nicola Goodwin. And to end rugby here, two tries for England from Jess Breach and Abby Dow, but Italy came back with one of their own from Sales, Sara Tunesi. It's England 12, Italy 5. And then having won their opener against Scotland, uh, 58 points to 7. Southampton are going to make a substitution here any moment now, and it's going to be Carlos Alcaraz who's going to come on for them as West Ham United look. For Socek, was that's why he's up there, Glenn. It's nothing. It's not rocket science, is it? The, what they want him to do, it's just lifted forward for it. Yeah, no, it's not rocket science. It's he's got a big physical presence, and they're going to try and use his aerial abilities up against the two Southampton centre backs and give them a bit of a a platform to build on and 
It's working at the moment. Here's Ben Rama attacking down the left. West Ham chipped to the far post. Chaleta Saar got there, read it, headed it away. Danger momentarily over. The back come West Ham United, leading by a goal to along five line. Ben Rama tucks it infield four or five yards to Emerson. Back to Ben Rama. Line adjacent to the edge of the Saints penalty area. In comes his cross. Away by Chaleta Saar with a big left foot volley, sort of thigh high volley it was, to get the danger away to Walcott. He pushes it back to Armstrong. Busy work on the Saints right hand side, but they can't. They can't keep possession, they can't string three, four passes together and the opportunity has gone and West Ham get it back then towards Fabianski in his penalty. A close very quickly by Sekumara. Good injection of pace to force the goalkeeper to clear it away and as a result it's just a West Ham United throw in on the halfway line. Going to make two substitutions here. Southampton, the other substitute coming on is Kamaldin Suleimana. So Carlos Alcaraz will come on, uh, centre a midfield player or a right midfield player and he will... Well, Eli Nusi is one of the players going off. And Silimana is coming on. And Mara is going off to be replaced by Alcaraz. So there's your two substitutions for Southampton. And we'll just wait and see how they line up after that. And while we can just muse over that will go to the Super League and a man who once took me for a drink in Wigan and all I can all I can explain to people is Dave Wood's friend in Wigan had hollow legs mm. he had hollow legs Dave Woods you're up at Alice Wood Giants I'd, Red I'd, Devils. I'd, I'd love to I'd love to describe your wallet from that night as well Jonathan but didn't get a glimpse I think Salford nil Huddersfield six latest score didn't see this one coming Salford's marks need pass went to ground Ashton Golding of Huddersfield picked it up jogged in from 10 meters the goals got over from Russell and Huddersfield lead here by six points to nil. And I still have those white fivers, uh, actually, Dave, but one day they'll, they'll see the light of day. Now here's Ward Prowse. Ward Prowse for Southampton. In then to Armstrong. West Ham leading by a goal to nil. Socek. Oh, he's lost possession there as Lave put him under pressure. Good work by Rice to win it back for West Ham United once and twice to put him to, the, to deny Armstrong. Now Ings trying to switch it away to Bowen. It's all a little bit muddled. There's no pattern of play, no. Great passing movements going on. West Ham United leading by a goal to Nenel. I think that in itself pattern uh, of misjudged passing uh, is because of the importance and the tension in the game, Glenn. Yes, and that's only going to get more as we get close to the final whistle if it stays the way it is. But can't help but feel that if one side can just string a few passes together. Oh, Ooh, Chaleta are under pressure there. Bowen was screaming up behind him and he just got it away desperate if he's misjudged that if he's caught the West Ham United play he'd have been off he's already on the yellow and West Ham have lost their way and this is a good spell here for Southampton now really so, positive changes from the manager Sinamana with a direct run into the West Ham United penalty area, but he forgot the ball and West Ham clear so check to Bowen 10 yards inside his own half releases Inks looking suspiciously offside Black stays down for the moment he's running here against Bednarak Needs support, four Southampton defenders back now. Is Bowen in support of Ings. Gets the left-hand side, gets the shot away, side netting, and the flag stayed down, you know. Yes, and Danny Ings just hangs his head in the middle of the penalty area because he knows he maybe should have done better with that. He was bearing down on goal, just couldn't quite move the defender. He was fainting the ball, trying to get the big defender to move. He couldn't quite get him out of the way. And all of a sudden, the cavalry arrived and the chance had just slipped away. Southampton look better after the substitutions, that's for sure. Here's Walker Peters. Back to Ward Prowse. Crucial time in the game, 56 minutes gone. West Ham United leading by a goal to nil up to 14th at the moment in this very, very tight, topsy turvy relegation rat race. Walker Peters now to Ward Prowse. Had to stretch, lost possession. Socek was on him very, very quickly. West Ham have it with Paqueta, but he looked sloppy. He looked. A little bit slow, he was caught in possession, he's Suleiman and now the shot ripped across the turf but wide of goal, it's a goal kick. Suleiman just gets away there, puts it through the West Ham player's legs, only has one thought and that's the hit, a shot just off target but intent from Southampton, much much better from the 11 out there after the changes. And Ruben Sellers is out there, he's in deep conversation with one of his backroom staff of how he can affect this game more he looks back towards the bench which is quite a way away when manager out there in the touchline they normally look back and be able to get a bit of feedback from the bench but I think it's about 40 yards away he's 
the rest, rest of the backroom staff and it's not ideal I don't think it's an Olympic shot put away from the seats in the dugout so I was told when the stadium was set up he's a good 200 yards away from us I would say Glenn wouldn't you yeah easy yeah but what would you say about uh, about four rain it's it, well it, it's a it's a rasping Glen Murray drive away from us I would say I don't know, but I'm not sure I could kick it straight to be honest <laughs> <laughs> it's 1-0 to West Ham Inks tried to spin lost his way Armstrong got the challenge in Southampton clear away then towards Walcott now very much leading the line with Armstrong in support on the right Alcaraz tucked in into the central supporting role and Kamaldine Sulemana on the left hand side the Ghanaian just back from their two games against Angola they won at home and drew away one all he started both of those games probably why he didn't start today he certainly has injected something the young man that he's brought on Alcaraz I really like him in the middle of the midfield he just seems to be pushing into more of a 10 role today but certainly likes to to let a shot off when he gets opportunity and he's a very feisty character Easter is coming and National is coming and we'll have commentary of the Masters live from Augusta across Sports Steps from Five Live Sport from Thursday to our preview live from Augusta on Wednesday and Mark Chapman leading the team out there oh dear someone had to do it Chappers and you've got the gig now here's Southampton on the left hand side I bet he, I bet he protested long and hard about that one no 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 oh alright then anyway Southampton have it on their left they trail by a a goal to nobody into the West Ham United penalty here they go and it's again a good burst up from Perro. it took a, a, a challenge by Socek to deny him entry into the six yard area but I think he's got forward very willingly yeah he has Perro, and he just gets that out of his feet and it's a sliding challenge from Socek that has to be timed perfectly otherwise he'd be in danger of giving a penalty away love the Masters love the big spring sporting events on five live in comes across the corner kick from Ward Prowse back headed out of the danger by Aged. first to it is Rice got there lengthened his stride took on Alcaraz on the outside drew the foul that is it, it, it look it's not it's not earth shattering it's not a 35 yard pile driver goal but in itself that little cameo was all about Declan Rice and it was superb yeah it was just striding down this near touch line to us he's a fine specimen when he gets going West Ham will want a little bit more out of him they want him to dictate play and influence this game more because without doubt he has got the quality now a long free kick out by Aged headed out by Chiletta Saar first to it was Paqueta Paqueta might have been fouled the referee is playing on we'll be at the rugby in a moment the move breaks down so we've got England, Italy in the women's six nations and Nicola Goodwin and it's 17 points to five, three tries for England, but they're not having it all their own way. Italy putting up a fierce, fierce attack here as we look at the pitch. They're just about 20 metres away from the try line. Their first try came two minutes after the opener from England. It's England 17, Italy 5. England uh, looking to make it two wins in two. Wales and France have already achieved that feat. So far, Italy beaten in their opener by the French. Now here's Walker-Peters for... Southampton between the penalty box and the West Ham right hand touch line kind to take on his man Drew Emerson Emerson good fullback play that didn't, didn't dive in just kept a little bit of distance blocked the cross and uh, it's going to be a throw in to West Ham United also equally well won by the experienced Danny Ings who went to hold it up and forced the throw in their way and West Ham United are going to bring on uh, Mikel Antonio any moment now we presume, well, people might presume that would be for Dunnings, might be for this man rising now, so check with the header on. Southampton pick it up, and they're the stronger team at the moment, I think, Glenn. Yes, they are, yeah, but whether it's for Suchek, I'm not sure. I think he's, it's worked quite well, like that. His physicality just going forward a little bit further, but see Lavi on the ball playing Armstrong in here. Armstrong with the cross deflected away off Emerson, who cupped his body, got his knee to it, and got it away for a corner kick here for Southampton. But all the pressure here is with the Saints. It's a huge game for them. They've got good points away from home of late. Thinking of those Manchester United and Chelsea performances. They came into the game with a little bit of a bounce as well at the bottom of the table. It is massive for both clubs. Point will do. Victory, not paramount, not essential, but a real tonic. It's 1-0 to West Ham at the moment. 
It's Ward Prowse with the corner kick, bending away from goal, headed through his own six yard area by Paqueta, driven back into goal. The keeper saw it late, got down to smother the effort from Lavia. Yes, he did. He got it out of his feet on the far side of the box, Lavia. It looks like he's going to go back across the goal to Fabianski's left, and I think Fabianski's anticipating that, but he doesn't. He fires a low drive to his right, nearly wrong foot to the West Ham goalkeeper. Fabianski is just equal to it on a couple of occasions he's been called on he's been very very neat and tidy in his play Fabianski this afternoon there's a Glenn Murray on the BBC for you 1-0 to West Ham United Antonio still waits to come on now here's Alcaraz moves to his right hand side to give himself time and space to get the shot away jinked into that space got the shot away comfortably dealt with but at the moment it's all Southampton yeah, it's all Southampton we said when he came on Alcaraz he likes to get shots away Dances around a couple of West Ham players, shot on target, bounces four or five yards before Fabianski. But again, good goalkeeping for him. Started four of the last five games, Alcaraz, the man they brought in in January from Racing Club in Argentina. He's played less than 100 games, again, one bought for the future. This is their current model, he's 20, bought him for 12 million, keep him for two years, they can sell him off for 25, 30, it's the model now perfected by Brighton and Hove Albion and Brentford have that model as well teams are learning to adjust and plan now for Premier League existence like that Ink's got, Ink's got caught right on top of his head um, as he went to hold it up on the halfway line he's now going to depart and Miguel Antonio will come on while they're making the change let's go to Wembley Stadium again it was a good start for Bolton Wanderers against Plymouth in the Papa John's Henry Moran they still lead Plymouth by two goals to nil, just uh, past the 24-minute mark, and uh, Plymouth starting to come back into it. Bolton could easily have had a third, though. Big chance block. Dempsey looking for a second. Good block on the goal line. Ryan Hardy for Plymouth has just come close. Furious tempo to this match. Bolton two, Plymouth nil. So Antonio is on for West Ham United, and Danny Ings is the man who has gone off and Socek is still right up there with Mikel Antonio and West Ham are attacking here with Bowen to the edge of the penalty it ricochets back to him sets his sights moves to his left tries to get a shot away does it's blocked in there by Benrack and Southampton they get it away yeah, really the... stretched now sorry Glenn yeah they're the moments Bowen two op opportunities two bites of the cherry comes back he has another goal opens the goal up can't quite get it past the Southampton defence. Bowen into the penalty, in comes his cross, it's squeezed away by Walker Peters. The cross, I think, was aimed at Socek, who was in the middle. It's a throw to West Ham. This is what this ground can be like. Now, listen to it. We had the boos in the first half an hour. Now, West Ham United fans really behind their side. And as we approach the last 25 minutes of this game, it's really starting to open up for both teams. Gaps appearing at the back, people trying to make amends. And Bowen's one of them. In the WSL, Leicester City 1, Reading 0, Santini with the Leicester goal moves them off the bottom of the WSL table. I think Brighton will be the team at the bottom, just check on that for you. Um, but uh, Brighton have changed their manager a couple of times this season, of course. Now, West Ham United are going to make a, another change. Yeah, Brighton would be uh, bottom, bottom of the table with nine points. Leicester will go above them with ten. Flynn Downs is going to come on now for West Ham United. Midfield player, uh, signed last summer from Swansea City he was uh, there about a season he's a former Ipswich player went out on loan to Luton Town he's a four league starts for West Ham United but has played a, a regular role off the bench this campaign big West Ham fan by the way that's a free kick against the Hammers as Socek turned Lavia they are not out of this game at all Southampton at 1-0 down they could easily come back into it and level and go ahead you know it's that sort of a match yeah it's in the balance at the moment isn't it West Ham pushing for that second goal like I say gap starting to open up but Southampton very much in it especially from shots outside the area can't really seem to create anything of any means inside the 18-yard box but they are a constant threat free kick 50 yards out Ward Prowse into the box climbing and trying to get the ball headed square was Jan Bednarak he towered above Aged but just couldn't turn the header square and he plods back into his own half and Flynn Downs is going to come on for West Ham United and the man he will replace is uh, number 28 Thomas Socek so it's midfielder for midfield he's been blowing hard 
in the last four or five minutes or so check. I don't, I'm not too sure Flynn Downs is, is the type of player to play the role that Socek was being asked for in this second half. No, maybe a slight change in formation again. Maybe shoring it up a little bit. He might, he might just slot in next to Declan Rice and have more of a four and a two and, and let the forward players on the field now. Ben Rama, Antonio, Toqueta and, and Bowen. Just, just go and just, just give them that reassurance behind. Just past the midway mark in the second half on five right one nil West Ham United We're in the last quarter of the game then cleared away by Fabianski looking for Antonio but one in the air by Bednarak very very fine margins between so many teams at the bottom of the table for so many reasons ability wise lack of form bit of bounce but uh, fine margins here on the pitch the one goal in the first half now Paqueta tries to release Ben Rama headed away by Bednarak centre half position for Southampton with the orange boots gets it away the pole squirted forward by Armstrong on the halfway line but Aga imperiously comes forward and drives on for West Ham United he's already covered 20 yards inside that Southampton half pushes it out wide to Ben Rama the left side forward and he crashes his cross off the knee of Kyle Walker Peters and West Ham United have a corner at 1-0 up I must say, JP, on the afternoon, agard has been absolutely outstanding, both defensively and attacking, getting the only goal to separate the teams at the moment, but been a constant threat in both boxes. Corner kick for West Ham United. On their left, Emerson will take it, so he will curl this away from goal. So Anton about to make another change down there. Can't quite see who they're going to bring on. Might be Paul on Uachu. It's going to be a, a corner kick by Emerson. Headed on the edge of the six-yard area. Rice was in there. Zuma couldn't make contact. Comes out. Bowen tried his luck. Shot slammed into the box. Blocked in Southampton. Clear. Over the halfway line. 60 yards. Straight all the way back to Fabianski. Hanging on at the moment. Bowen's starting to get shots on target. At will. One falls to him there. Gets good purchase on it. Just can't quite beat the crowd in front of him. A couple of Southampton substitutions. No, it's Joe Rebo who's going to come on. And it is Paul Onoachu is the other one. Oh, no, it's Ainsley Maitland Niles who's going to come on, I beg your pardon. And here's Fabianski, deep inside his own hut. Clears, loops up towards Antonio, heads it back to Paqueta, releases Bowen into the penalty area, taking on his man. Out comes Pizzuno, dives in at his feet, gets the ball and will clear it away. Let's go for double trouble to St James's Park. Chris Waddle and John Murray up there with the team news. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, Newcastle, same team as against Nottingham Forest before the internationals. So Pulp, Botman and St Maximum are all fit to start. Joe Linton is back from suspension. He's a substitute, as is Anthony Gordon. And for Manchester United, Rashford is fit to start. Varane as well. And Sabita, who's in the midfield. Remember, Casemiro suspended. Dallow plays at right back with Juan Bissaka absent and Martial returns as a substitute. Here's Lavia, don't forget commentary of that kickoff at 4.30, 16.30 for you on Five Live. Out by Zuma at the back for uh, for West Ham United. A little bit of an error up by Bedrock because he went to get it away under pressure from Paqueta. It's going to be a throw in and it's going to be a throw in that we'll have belatedly because they're going to make these two substitutions now uh, for Southampton. On comes Paul Onoachu and Ainsley Maitland-Niles as well. Armstrong is departing. Can't see the second one will be who will go off. I think Steele Walcott is going to go off. He doesn't know yet. Uh, off, now he does. That goes his number and off he trots. So four of their substitutions made and we'll wait and see what they can do with Paul Onoachu. Six foot seven signed in January from Genk where he had a really good scoring record 85 in 134 games N not this season particularly but um, he's a player who does 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 have a pedigree throughout his career 164 goals in 344 games that's worthy of merit that yeah it is and I'm actually surprised we haven't seen him sooner because Theo Walcott he's, he's looked tired in the second half and he's not really offered too much physicality or in behind but this man that's come on looks quite big, six foot four. It's going to bring a lot of physicality, and it looks like he can get in behind as well. So Southampton have finally got a platform they can hit. But it's West Ham United will have a free kick here with 18 minutes to go on five live. Still the blue skies above us, the giant orbiter scaffolding thingy, Meccano thingy <laughs> from the Olympics. We can see poking its uh, red 
metallic structure into thought, the sky. I thought you were going to say it's ugly head. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to be poetic with words and feeling absolutely <laughs> miserable. But uh, it's going to be a free kick here for West Ham United. Two yards in from this near touchline. And it's going to be Emerson to take the free kick. Right foot, left footed into the box, headed away by Ward Prowse. Southampton still in the game at 1 0, lacking cutting edge, really. Emerson, this time it's a high aloft in from the left hand side. It'll jump on the edge of the penalty area for West Ham United. But they've won it back here, and now they can hear the ripple of applause from the fans. It was. Uh, once again, Aguerd, who made the leap on the far side, then chased all the way back to redeem possession for them. Here's Declan Rice over the halfway line at 1 0 at West Ham. That's a fine ball over the top of Chiletta Tsar. Antonio between the far touch line and the penalty area. Whisks his shot through the penalty area. It whips through all the way. Not a touch. Throw into Southampton 18 yards from the dead ball line. West Ham getting down the right hand side there. Antonio making a good run. Good understanding to play it into the channel for him. And he Definitely put it in the right area, but there's no one thinking or on the same wavelength as him. And he goes between the goalkeeper and the defender right out the other side. For Southampton throwing. West Ham United have possession. 1 0 at Emerson. Tidy ball to him by Paqueta. He was a strong challenge by Bednarak. It's going to get him a yellow card. He came out square onto the runner and. and well, he didn't dive in, but he, he, he sort of energetically moved in, almost two-footed and caught the man. It's a, it's a free kick and a yellow card. Yeah, there's no, no complaints from the big pole there. Takes him out and a deserved yellow card, but more important than that, it's a free kick in a very, very dangerous area. Actually, a similar area, maybe closer in than what West Ham opened the scoring with. Free kick here for West Ham, then. It's five yards in from the left-hand touchline. It's only a couple of yards outside the Southampton box. Maybe, maybe three, four yards outside the penalty area. Uh, Emerson is striding back from the ball. Short sleeve, claret shirt, short dark hair. Runs forward, it's a dummy run. It's Ben Rama with the hit. And well judged by Bazuno. Might have seen it a little bit late, but anyway, he got there and pushed it away. He did, Ben Rama. I always felt as though he might just try and sneak it in that near post, and he did. Didn't quite get it into the top corner quite enough to trouble Bazunu. It's a comfortable save. Here's Emerson now for West Ham from the short tap corner. Lofts across far side. Zuma was there, couldn't get over the header, headed it over the bar. Instead, well, well over the bar. West Ham beginning to create a little bit and Southampton haven't had the bounce effect they might have thought they would have had from the substitutes. Quarter of an hour to go, West Ham leading 1-0. You're right, JP, but do you know what? West Ham, they're having a number of opportunities and they're not putting the game to bed. Southampton are still in this and it only takes a moment. The moment, they are bottom of the table. A couple of points adrift of Leicester City, who've parted company with Brendan Rodgers today. That's the big news from off the field of play. Let's go to the AJ Bell Stadium. Dave Woods again. 33 minutes played, Salford 6, Huddersfield 8. Huddersfield extended their lead with a Russell penalty. But we've just seen Shane Wright plunging over after some rare pressure on the Huddersfield line. Sneeze kicked the goal, Salford 6, Huddersfield 8. Southampton have possession on the far side. It's a way, way, way in the distance. Chiletasar pulls it back to Bazuna with his sort of red and orange goalkeeping guard and the long black sleeves to Bednarak. Finds Walker Peters, it wasn't a good ball to him. We could pull just up then to Onowachi. Heavy touch by him, the ball rolls off his toes. Yet to score from Southampton since that big money move in, in January. But giant of a man, it's a throw to West Ham United. Down below us earlier on today, Celtic won in the Scottish Premiership by two goals to nil. WSL Arsenal beat Manchester City 2-1 to go above them in the table. Everton beat Tottenham by two goals to one with a stoppage time winner. And Leicester City lead Reading by a goal to nil. Later on, West Ham play Liverpool and Aston Villa play Chelsea. West Ham are not reinventing their investment in women's football, but certainly... Um, upgrading it if you like uh, uh, Karen Brady is going to play more of a role I believe in that and uh, trying to push women's football to another level at West Ham United which is good to see and it's Southampton here training one they'll have possession on the far side Suleimana on watch who's on the edge of the penalty area here's Perro again this is a good run goes inside the fullback into the penalty area Perro tried to pull it back he knew he had players waiting in the deep position but West Ham United scramble it away he's trying to put it back there to Carlos Alcaraz 
Yeah, so it's Declan Rice, it falls to him, he just swivels on it, gets it away. Anywhere out of danger. Goes to Southampton, and they relaunch another attack. Walker Peters, into Ward Prowse, having a look, he's moving right to left. Five live with West Ham leading by a goal to now. Had a big week of foot, we mentioned the Masters of course. And so much going on this week on Five Live Sport. Bednarak squeezes into Lavi. He's got room to turn, face up, find Maitland Niles. Maitland Niles back to Ward Prowse, and out it comes into Walker Peters on this near side. This is good possession play by Southampton. It ends with Alcaraz stabbing the ball out of play. Don't forget you'll hear all the reaction to this game on the Football Daily podcast via BBC Sounds, and you can check out Five Live Bunsing with boxing with uh, Steve Bunce. You'll get all the reaction to the AJ fight from yesterday evening and uh, got some live IPL cricket for you as well tomorrow afternoon from 5 to 3 Ben Stokes and Moen Ali's Chennai Super Kings uh, they're playing the Lucknow Super Giants so you can listen to that on BBC Sounds as well that's a free kick for Southampton and every step of the title race now surely just Arsenal and Manchester City in it the race for Champions League football and Europe and Brentford and Brighton still in the mix with that and Fulham will say they're not out of it and then down to the basement area of the table with so many teams still involved right here through into the end of May on five live the cup final in early June as well now here's a chance for them to get the cross in Southampton Suleiman plays it back then to Warprow steadies himself puts his foot on the ball and crosses accurately to the far post good header away there by Kira ball travels to the left hand touch line. Southampton keep it in play traveling uh, losing by a goal to Lavia that's an untidy, that's a tired sort of a ball out to the left hand touch and then the Perro and Bowen can get it away Southampton have it Ward Prowse in the sunshine near side of the pitch in dappled shadow created by the big roof of the Olympic Stadium London Stadium Rice stretching for a challenge on uh, Suleimano I think can feel aggrieved that the free kick wasn't given the referee allowed him to go on initially Rice has won it back Rice finds Bowen left hand touch line here now, now for uh, Ben Rama rather for West Ham in comes his cross it's blocked Rice has it back again it's tucked out to the left hand touch line and Ben Rama Ben Rama finds Emerson on a, on a run inside Emerson's cross in the end picked up by Bazuno there was a moment of hesitation by Chiletta Tsaro didn't get the initial clearance away nearly paid for it yes yeah, the ball fizzed across by Emerson cut back and it arrives at Chiletta Tsaro's feet he tries to clear it and it literally just goes nowhere it goes about two yards away from him and the first to react is Gavin Bazunu and the big man will be very very thankful of that Bazunu just back from uh, Irish international duty played against the French good account of themselves but were beaten they don't want to be celebrating 1-0 defeats, they were saying after that. Watch a lovely ball forward for Southampton into the West Ham penalty area by Lavia looking for Onoachu. And uh, Fabianski saw it coming all the way. Yes, he did. He was quick to react off his line there, Fabianski, just getting in front of the big Southampton centre forward. But you can just see as the minutes and seconds tick by, the magnitude of this three points for West Ham, they're just starting to slip back and defend what they've got which is inviting Southampton onto them and if they do that the crowd here will get really edgy Bowen has it right side stretches his legs carries it to the edge of the penalty area gets a low cross in oh it's almost an own goal by Chiletta Tsar in trying to block the cross he forced it back goalwards and it's a splendid save by Bazunu arcing back to push it over the bar yes it is indeed because he has no idea as this arrives at his defender's foot it's coming his way but it does and his reactions cat like good save by Gavin Bazuna big Dublin up again only a youngster really he's only 21 only turned 21 in February good investment for the future but they need these players to blossom in the Premier League not in that turbulent championship where there are football games every five minutes it seems what a difficult division that is to get out of in comes the cross then towards the far post from the corner loose at the far side was Paqueta and he skied it came at him very quickly leaning off the ball over it went you're right it did come at it quickly but his first touch was good he just needed to recenter himself and swings his left foot at it he's not set but all up and over the bar but that is another opportunity goes begging for West Ham signed for 45 signed for uh, well in the end 50 million it could be 
on a contract through to June 27. There's an option for more, but I think it's fair to say that Paqueta won't be here next season if West Ham United aren't a Premier League team. And you can look around this West Ham side. You were saying this early on, weren't you, in the programme today? A number of those players won't be here if they do drop a division. Declan Rice, you would presume, wouldn't be here. Uh, might stay. I mean, West Ham United through and through, but there will be a lot of teams leading the chase for him. It's vital they stay up. Here's Lavia now then for Southampton. Certainly one for the future. Been impressed with him today. Yeah, Wants the ball. He's been good, hasn't he? Both directions, the middle of midfield. Always been an option to receive it. Always covering well. Got there again. Dispossessed by Paqueta, who tried some sort of wonderful back heel. He ended in the end. He he, he looked like he looked like your uncle trying to practice a dance move at your sister's wedding <laughs> and falling horribly flat on his face. And I have a particular uncle who did that once, actually, and he came a cropper just like he did. Anyway, it's through to uh, the Southampton goalkeeper. He tried something that was very artistic and pretty, and it ended up pretty ugly there, didn't he, Paqueta? I, I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> but the dance move at your sister's wedding. <laughs> Not quite, just being out on a football field in general. <laughs> Here's Alcaraz now. How long have we got left here? We've got six minutes left and a little bit of stoppage time. So plenty of time for Southampton to get back into it. Here's Maitland Niles for them. And on by Lavia. It's collected here by Ward Prowse. Not quite shooting territory for him. Lots of West Ham bodies between him in goal. It's a good claim by Zuma coming out of the box to win the ball. And the pass by Alcaraz attempting to find Walker Peters goes straight out of play. And the young Argentine looks despairing. And it's a goal kick for West Ham United. And from up here where I'm sat, that looked like the right pass. They were just on the wrong wavelength. Parker is trying to penetrate that West Ham back line. Ward Prowse staying on the safe side, wanting it to feet. Just a little bit of miscommunication, but another attack just goes dead. West Ham United fans beginning to sing the bubbles anthem. As Fabianski clears it away and the anthem picks up volume and rolls around this bowl of the stadium. On five live, they lead by a goal to nil. Maitland Niles couldn't control it on the right touchline for Southampton, but it's cleared away for a throw to Southampton. And we'll go back in the uh, women's six nations to Franklin's Garland. Franklin's Gardens and join Nicola Goodwin. And five tries for England, two apiece for Jess Breach and Claudia McDonald, and one for Abby Dow, make it 27 5 at half time. Italy not letting them have it all their own way, though. And we'll go to the Super League. Huddersfield Giants, Salford Red Devils, Dave Woods. Half time, Salford 6, Huddersfield 14. Owen Trout's finished to an electrifying burst through the right centre by Kevin Nagama, has given Huddersfield comfort at half time. Salford 6, Huddersfield 14. Now it's crossed in by Ward. Prowse is a brilliant header off the bar. Super header bar to watch it. He struggled to get the rebound and it's over by Walker Peters in Southampton, so close to an equaliser. So, so very close, Southampton. It's Ward Prowse. He gets time and the ball gets his head up. Puts a wicked ball across. The big man meets it onto the bar, but that's what he brings on Oachu physicality in the box and that's what they've lacked all game they've got in good areas but no one to cross the ball to this time first two it hits the bar asking questions as this game ticks towards the 90th minute very tense four minutes to go bottom two before the day started West Ham United will be 14 if it ends like this but there will be no respite in this relegation rat race it'll trundle on to the next games Southampton against Manchester City next weekend at St Mary's and West Ham United here against Newcastle in the week and it's a free kick to the Ajax the Hammers and they're just about to bring on a, another substitution any moment now Pablo Fornals is going to come on for the midfield player is Aaron Cresswell going to come on as well the left back anyway here's Ben Rama to take on Walker Peters claims the throw but it goes Southampton's way, despite his consternation, Cresswell's going to come on as well for West Ham United. So a double substitution for them, and they'll take some time out to do this. Pakatar will go off, and then will come for now. Listen to the applause for Pakatar. They they want him to do well. They understand the talent he's got. They want him to do well here. Cresswell coming on as well. Emerson has been replaced, but well, he wasn't 
fully fit. And it's left back for left back for West Ham United. I can sense they want Paqueta to do well. He's a, he's a very, very good player. And it's tough for him to come in into a struggling team. Came here knowing that this was a team that nearly went all the way in Europe last season, expected them to be top seven, top eight. It's been a struggling year. Yes, it has. And like you say, the, the reception he got as he left the field of play there, they do want him to do well. They're willing him to do well. But with a price tag like he's got, he can't help but feel he's got to do more. Initial 36 and a half million, rising to 50 million. It's a big millstone around his neck, isn't it? As West Ham United look to break away on the far side now. Four nails. Holds it up now, releases in the middle. Antonio, a little bit of space, checks back to his right hand side. Benrack got a vital touch. Antonio is still there. Cornells is arriving, in comes across, looking for Ben Rama. Antonio back to goal on the edge of the six yard area, smothered by Southampton players. And still forces the corner kick as the ball looped up in the air and Bazuno couldn't keep it in play. And when he was in there, he just checked back across Benrack. I thought he was going to strike it, he doesn't, he lays it off. Ball comes back in and seems to juggle it. He's got three or four Southampton defenders around him and none of them can actually take it off. Antonio, such a big physical presence, powerful man, and eventually wins a corner. Corner kick for West Ham United in the last 75 seconds, though there will be a chunk of stoppage time. Bowen will take it. Aguez on the edge of the six yard area. His goal separates the sides, of course. Antonian on the goal line. Zuma's in there as well. Looks for Aguez at far post. And it's gone all the way through. And that'll trickle out of play for a goal kick for Southampton. And we'll go to Wembley Stadium. Bolton Wanderers against Plymouth Argyle in the Papa John's Trophy final. Henry Morat. And Bolton 2, Plymouth nil. Two goals in the first 10 minutes from Dempsey and Charles doing the business. Could have been, should have been more for Bolton. Plymouth have grown into the game but struggled to create many chances. Half time, Bolton 2, Plymouth nil. Now Southampton will bring it away. With Lavia touches the ball to the right touchline. Ward Prowse scoots it back, backward a square. Benrack to his left hand side, five yards away, is the tall, brooding figure of Duce Chiletta Tsa into Lavia, Southampton in possession, in controlled possession, but when they finally get frustrated, it's all the way through into the West Ham half, deep ball, looking for Anuachu, Aghead stretched, he said it gave a moment of anxiety, because instead of knocking it back directly to Fabianski, he sort of went back with a square to his right, and Fabianski came and gathered in the end, and we've got a minimum of three minutes of stoppage time. How many substitutions? Six, 30 seconds each. Roughly right there. Bowen. Dispossessed by Perro. Stabs it away out of play for a throw in. West Ham fans think that Perro's arms were all over Jared Bowen. But the assistant referee was no more than a, a yard of way. Can't help but feel that West Ham are just limping towards a massive three points here. I wouldn't say they've been the better team. In comes the throw, Chiletta Saar heads it away, very little to choose between the two sides. Southampton hit the bar moments ago through Anuachu of course, Bowen hit the bar in the first half for West Ham. They'll have a throw and they're just trying to send the sands of time seeping away. We've had a minute of stoppage time on Five Live, thoroughly enjoyed being here with Glenn in the warm East London spring sunshine. It's warm Glenn, Murray. it's warm. My fingertips don't feel warm right now. Well, listen, fail to prepare, Glenn Murray. Prepare to fail. Hey, I will give you, it does look like a beautiful day, but it doesn't feel like one. I'm wearing lots of layers. Should we go into detail? Rather not. <laughs> it's cleared away up towards the halfway line. And uh, it's turned back then by Aged to the goalkeeper, Fabianski. High, up and under, straight through the middle. Out to collect comes Chiletta size. It's a weird sort of a game he has couple of mistakes in it, his header was powerful enough to get it away but it's immediately played out to Bowen on the far touchline, the West Ham right, he draws Chiletta Tsar out there and he just settles for the throw in, that's all he was ever going to do really and we've got what, a, a minute of stoppage time left I think. Yes, yeah, game management by Bowen, he had options in the box but he decided to go for the corner flag, just killing this final three minutes. 
They'll wait and take their time. Oh, it's them done well there. The throw to Antonio came at an awkward height. He couldn't control it. He bounced away off him for a goal kick. David Moy, I'll tell you what, if Southampton get anything here for the remaining minute of stoppage on, David Moyes will be absolutely furious with the way West Ham have wasted that opportunity to sit on the game. And Bazunu clears. One for Zuma to win here. Well, he didn't win it cleanly, and there's a hesitation at the back. Again, eventually gets it away because Suleimano was bearing down on him. He's done well since he came on. Perrault tries to battle with Bowen. He's had a good game for Southampton. Now, Onuachi stumbles to his knees. West Ham United try and bring the ball away. Lavia, possibly one of the game's best players, on an angle with the ball to Walker Peter sold short and cleared away by Aaron Kressel. Great roar went up for Aaron Kressel. Such a popular. West Ham United player and the final whistle goes and the roar is even greater because the roar signals that West Ham United have got an absolutely precious win here. They extend their unbeaten run in all competitions to four games. They have beaten Southampton with a goal in the first half ahead of by Naif Aguirre. It was eventually given after VAR took so long to give it. It was scratchy, it was nervy and I'll tell you what, Southampton didn't do badly in defeat but they've been defeating left. Yes, they have indeed, and a massive three points for West Ham here. Didn't play that well, very anxious stadium, but you know what, they got that one goal and they held on to it. Southampton, on the other hand, will be very disappointed going away with nothing from here, but there'll be positives to take from their performance when Ruben Sellers sits down and the emotion's gone out of it. I think moving forward, we might see a bit more of Anachu who came on and Give them a physical platform up front. Not about quality at the moment, it's about quantity. Quantity being in points, and West Ham have three. They've beaten Southampton by a goal tonight. Their sixth home win of this Premier League season. The same number as Chelsea, the same number of Fulham. They've got difficult games to come here, Glenn Murray. But if they do stay up this season, the London Stadium is where it's happening. Yeah, massively so. And listen, today wasn't a good performance. They got the job done, but they, they weren't the West Ham that we've seen previously or, or, or that the 11 that started the game should produce week in week out but listen three points that's all that matters at this stage of the season the predicament they're in three points by hook or by crook that's all they need and they got it and it's a little bit of weight lifted around here in one moment one full-time whistle Glenn they go from 19th to 14th now we all know how incredibly close it is down at the bottom but that just highlights what you've just said it doesn't matter from now on in it does not matter how well you play limping over the line takes you over the line yeah without doubt it does and, and that is what's called for at this this stage of the season it doesn't matter how they come i mean even if you get a couple of on goals it does not matter three points are so so important or any point should i say in the predicament they're in and you say yes they have risen to 14th but it's a very insecure 14th it could change drastically in only a matter of games. I mean, they're so tight together, the, the teams at the bottom. But whenever they've been asked questions over here against other relegation candidates, they've come up trumps and they've produced the goods. What do you make of Southampton's performance, Jonathan, overall? And, and I know, like we've just said, the points are the only thing that matters, but a couple of centimetres lower on a header and they'd be leaving with one. Yeah, and they didn't start badly either. You know, they, they pressed West Ham United really high and energetically in the, last, in the first half hour, but they just didn't have any sort of a, a cutting edge. They've got six goals in the last eight games in all competitions, and, and, the, and you're absolutely right on the watch's header that hit the bar later on. Alcaraz had an opportunity, the goalkeeper's made a save there, and I, I thought Lavia played really well in midfield, lots of energy for him. I, I, maybe they'll start with Paul Anuachu up front in future weeks. Silamana looked bright when he, when he came on. There really wasn't a lot between the two teams. I think, you know, Steve, there'll be there'll be a surprise along the way from Southampton on the way and people are looking at the games you know they're expected to lose like Man City at home well, hang on they've beaten them already in the cup this season in the cup Arsenal away you know while they will be though people will say they have to win the Forest away they have to win the games against relegation but I just think Southampton will pull off a surprise win here or there 
and that might save them, but it's going to be uphill. This is a massive one they could ill afford to lose. Yeah, still got Palace at home to come, Bournemouth at home to come and Fulham at home to come for Southampton before the end of the season. Jonathan Glenn, thank you very much indeed. Really enjoyed the commentary. Jonathan Pearce with Glenn Murray at the London Stadium where the bubbles are blowing all around West Ham United up to 14th in the Premier League table thanks to that victory. Very shortly we'll be focusing on things.